Good morning, class 9. Let's have a quick recap of what we have seen till now. We have seen the earth. We have seen the layers of the earth. We have seen the Pangaea. The division of the Pangaea. I mean the crust and the division of the Pangaea in weathering. And now we are going to see the Panthalassa. That is the hydrosphere. The major division of the earth. The major part of the earth. What the earth is comprised of. 71% of the earth is comprised of water. Yeah. Which is once upon a time a single water body which was known as Panthalassa. This Panthalassa because of introduction, introduction of landforms interference of landforms was divided into different water bodies and it was it is now known as oceans and seas so this study of oceans and seas is known as hydrosphere man has went into very deeper parts of the ocean to see what is there in the oceans and moreover oceans are more deeper than what is there. The depth of the oceans is almost 11,000 meters deep inside whereas the height, the maximum height what we see outside is only almost 8,800 meters not even 9,000 meters right and oceans if we see a large water body is known as a sea whereas larger water body, larger seas are known as oceans. And there are four major oceans on the earth. The Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean and the Southern Ocean. Coming to our Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean is known as half an ocean. Indian Ocean is known as half an ocean because one side of the Indian Ocean we are having a landmass. That is why Indian Ocean is referred to half an ocean and the other four oceans are referred to major oceans. Now let us see the importance of ocean currents. Oceans are important to us in many ways. See for example we get many metals from oceans. Metals like nickel cobalt, manganese, all these are derived from oceans. Many fossil fuels, most of our transport is dependent on fossil fuels, petroleum, uh, diesel, etc. These are derived from uh, oceans, right? The sense our most essential material in our food, common salt, is also derived from oceans. Oceans serve as a mode for transport. We travel on oceans, right? Oceans regulate the temperature of land either through ocean currents or through convection currents. Oceans regulate the temperature of land and after all now uh, oceans are acting as a dustbin for all our waste what we are throwing. Now coming to the next topic distribution of land and water. See we have seen that 71% of earth's crust is filled with water. Out of this 71%, 97% out of this 71%, 97% is filled with water and the other 3% is filled with ice. And the other 3% is filled with ice is in the form of polar caps. Water cycle or the hydrological cycle affects the life on the earth directly. Okay. Hydrological cycle or the water cycle is nothing but the movement of water from the atmosphere to the land and the land to atmosphere once again. Right. Atmosphere to land and land to atmosphere once again. That is what we know it as hydrological cycle or the water cycle. One point to be noted is less than 1% of the moisture, less than 1% of the moisture is regulated in the water cycle, right? 
out of all 100% of moisture, less than 1% of moisture is regulated in the water cycle. The water in the ocean is never constant. So, this unresting water is coming out in the form of different ways. For example, waves, ocean currents and tides. So, these are some different forms where the unresting water comes out in different forms. The first moment what we are going to see is waves. Waves is nothing but the upward and downward movement of water. The upward and downward movement of water is known as a wave. And this is normally caused by blowing wind. Tides are caused by the gravitational forces of the sun, moon and even the rotation of the earth. Most objects on the earth are subjected to this kind of tidal influence. Right? And since the distance of the moon is nearer, since the distance of the moon is less, moon causes more tidal influence than the sun. So let's see the types of tides. Basing on the level of water, uh, tides are divided into high tide and low tide. Basing on the level of water, the altitude of water, height of water, tides are divided into high tide and low tide. And the magnitude of water, magnitude of water, how much water is being displaced, that is divided into spring tide and neap tide. Okay? When the level of water is highest, it is known as a high tide. And when the level of water is known as, is low, it is known as a uh, low tide. When the sun, earth and moon are in straight angle, 0 degree or 180 degree angle, it is known as a spring tide. Here the gravitational force between these three will be higher. Now the sun, earth and moon are in a straight angle, that is 90 degrees or 270 degrees. It is known as a neap tide. Normally, these neap tides happen in the first or third quarters of the moon and here the tides are weaker. In spring tides, the uh, tides are stronger. Now, let's see the pattern of tides. How they are formed. The three major pattern of tides are a diurnal tide, a semi-diurnal tide and a semi-diurnal mixed type of tide. A diurnal tide has one high tide and one low tide. One high tide and one low tide normally uniformly done. And this kind of tides you find normally in Southeast Asia and Gulf of Mexico, all inland seas. And coming to high and low tides, and the semi-diurnal tides, you find high and low tides which are forming twice a day, twice a day and these are uniformly done, uniformly done and these are found normally in the Atlantic coast, Atlantic coast and semi-diurnal mixed tide. Here also you find two high tides and two low tides but one will be a diurnal tide and one will be a semi-diurnal tide. So this is known as a semi-diurnal mixed tide. It is not of a uniform pattern. It is not of a uniform pattern. This kind of tides you find normally in most parts of the world. Of course in the Pacific Ocean also. Most parts of the world will be having two high tides and two low tides which are not in uniform pattern. And the next movement of water, what we are going to see is the ocean current. These are nothing but large scale movements of water in the ocean currents. And these are divided into two. One is the warm ocean current and second one is the cold ocean currents. Normally, they have a lot of length and they are uh, wide in nature and their speed also is more than 5 knots. If they are shallow and the speed is less than 0.5 knots and that is known as a drift. That is known as a drift.
the warm ocean currents they originate near the equator and they flow towards the poles and the cold ocean currents they originate near the poles and flow towards the equator that is why their nature is cold and here the nature of the ocean currents is warm since they are flowing from the equator so now we are going to see the factors which are influencing the ocean currents the first factor which is influencing the ocean current is planetary winds planetary winds are nothing but the winds which blow in a certain direction which the winds which blow in particular direction year long these are also known as permanent winds so these winds which are blowing in a particular direction they influence the ocean currents being blown in one single direction the ocean currents also keep on blowing in the same direction for example the westerlies the westerlies since they are blowing they uh, influence the winds of the they influence the ocean currents of the pacific ocean and the atlantic ocean next one is variation in sea temperature this is the equator this is the equator normally near the equator you have higher temperature so the temperature here decreases the density of water so what happens the density uh, the, the waters flow from here to the poles the ocean currents flow from the equator to poles they become lighter and they flow from equator to the poles right wherever uh, it becomes lighter it flows from the place to where it is uh, heavier okay next one is variation in salinity here also where it is less dense from a less denser place to a more denser place more saline place salinity is amount of salt present in it salinity is nothing but the amount of salt present in the ocean so uh, ocean currents move from a higher dense uh, less denser area to a higher denser area because higher denser areas are areas of sedimentation areas of sedimentation example a uh, water flows from the atlantic ocean towards the mediterranean sea the salinity in the atlantic ocean is comparatively less than that of the mediterranean sea even in the indian ocean the salinity is less compared to the red sea red sea and mediterranean sea are very near to each other so the salinity amount is uh, i mean more or less equal the next factor is rotation of the earth this factor we have seen even before the coriolis effect or the ferrell's law that means all the ocean currents and all the winds in the northern hemisphere will be deflected to the right of their course and all the uh, ocean currents and uh, uh, winds will be deflected to the left of their course in the southern hemisphere because of the rotation of the earth from west to east now let's see the currents of different oceans now the first one what we are going to see is current of atlantic ocean we have different currents of atlantic ocean the first one what we are going to see is gulf stream which is originating from gulf of mexico gulf stream is a warm stream since it is originating from gulf of mexico gulf stream is a warm stream and this is one of the biggest uh, streams of the atlantic ocean and as it moves towards uh, europe it turns it turns as north atlantic drift so this north atlantic drift is divided into three uh, currents one is north atlantic drift as well and iberia current and canary current this is a cold current which is coming from the poles so this is a cold current and as it comes down canary current this is a cold current and from here we can see the north equatorial current and this gulf stream 
it mixes with the labrador current which is again coming from the poles and it causes a lot of fog near newfoundland so after causing this is one of the major disasters which are uh, which is happening near newfoundland right when fog happens it is both a uh, advantage and a disadvantage near newfoundland it is a major disadvantage why because when the fog is happening uh, transport people who are transporting cannot see the ships and all so here it is a major disadvantage right then coming down to so this north equatorial current comes down to uh, brazil to south america as brazil current it comes down to south america as brazil current and here from south atlantic from antarctic ocean we can see this south atlantic ocean again a cold current coming inside coming towards uh africa as benguela current so this benguela current is a positive current positive current in the sense africa is more of uh, uh deserts africa is more of deserts on the south of africa we have two deserts one is kalahari desert and second one is namib desert namib desert and kalahari desert so this benguela current lessens the temperature here for this deserts and gives a lot of moisture for those deserts right labrador current we have seen which is coming from the poles and which mixes with gulf stream and causes a lot of uh, fog near newfoundland in the next currents what we are going to see are the currents of the pacific ocean here pacific ocean also we are having cold currents and warm currents the first current what we are going to see is oeshio current oeshio current and this oeshio current is a cold current which is coming from the poles which is coming from the poles and this oeshio current mixes with the warm kuroshio current which comes from the which originates from the equator and both this oeshio current and kuroshio current unlike the gulf stream and the labrador stream they cause a lot of disadvantage near newfoundland but this kuroshio current and oeshio current mix together and they give in a lot of plankton they are the greatest uh, uh, plankton may, uh, they are the greatest plankton grounds in the world so that is one advantage of mixing of warm and cold currents so this oeshio current flows downwards from the poles uh, to southwest through the bering strait and through the sea of okhotsk so it comes downwards and this also influences the climate of russia and since this is a cold current it makes the temperature of japan which is present here it makes temperature of japan severely cold and even the mainland of asia it reduces the temperature of mainland of asia even that is one uh, influence of this oeshio current and next one what we are going to see is the warm kuroshio current the kuroshio current is a fast oceanic current and it is since it is a warm current it makes all this adjacent places warm it goes till alaska and it keeps all these places uh, frost free in winter it keeps all this alaskan canada and all these places frost free in winter uh, we have seen oeshio and kuroshio when they meet they make a lot of plankton and they make good fishery grounds and the next current what we are going to see for the pacific ocean is the north atlantic drift so here from the gulf current from the gulf stream we have seen a continuation current the uh, north atlantic drift 
so this north atlantic drift we have seen that it is divided into three currents one is the north atlantic drift one is the iberian current and third one is the canary current so this north atlantic drift is very helpful in keeping uh, norway and other european nations warm because most of these european nations are very uh, near to the poles and these european nations are warm because of this north atlantic drift it's very helpful in keeping norway ice free the norway region is made ice free because of this north atlantic drift and these are few cold currents of uh, the pacific ocean which keep the hot californian area cool this is the californian current which keeps this area this is the san jose uh, area which is uh, hot and this is the peru current and here we have the atacama desert and this currents keep these areas cool and moving towards the winds of the indian ocean here we are having two types of winds one is the winds of the southwest monsoon and winds of the north east monsoon so this uh, these are the winds of the southwest monsoon which are originating from the southern part of the equator so these winds since they are originating from an ocean these winds carry a lot of moisture and when they are going towards the landmass they give a lot of rainfall and second one is the north east winds the north east winds which originate in the winter season the north east winds which are originating in the winter season and these originate from a landmass that is why these never carry moisture land masses do not have that much moisture as a water bodies has that is why these land these uh, uh, monsoons do not have do not carry that much moisture these flow from northeast to southwest whereas the southwest monsoons flow from southwest to north east in the last part what we are going to see is the effect of ocean currents ocean currents make a place warm or cold the cold ocean currents they make a place cold and the warm ocean currents like kuroshio current or the gulf stream they make the neighboring places warm right warm currents not only keep the place warm they make some places like norway uh, or uh, uh, russia they make uh, or alaska they make these places ice free in winter right some play, some currents like labrador they freeze the place whereas uh, some uh, warm currents like gulf stream they make the place ice free warm currents absorb more amount of moisture whereas cold currents cannot uh, absorb more amount of moisture places like the atacama desert though it is influenced by a cold current it is not having more amount of rainfall because it is influenced by the peru current which is a cold current benguela current benguela current which is very near to the kalahari and namib deserts it is also a cold current which is lowering the temperature of a place but it is not uh, allowing to pick moisture allow, allowing to absorb lot of moisture so that uh, stops the amount of moisture to be uh, withheld to that place as we have seen in the case of new found land and uh, oeshio and uh, kuroshio uh, currents new found land it is a big disadvantage of mixing of uh, warm and cold currents like gulf stream and labrador stream so here most of the accidents happen but in the case of oeshio and kuroshio uh, currents lot of plankton is increased in the case of great banks also in the case of great banks there is a mixing of warm and cold currents which Uh, give rise to a lot of plankton great banks is in the us so 
इट इज बोथ एन एडवांटेज एंड डिसएडवांटेज दिस ओशन करेंट सेव अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड फ्यूअल बिकॉज इफ अ शिप इज सेलिंग डाउनवर्ड्स इफ अ शिप इज सेलिंग डाउन द ओशन करेंट नॉट अगेंस्ट द ओशन करेंट इफ अ शिप इज सेलिंग डाउन द ओशन करेंट इट गोज वेरी फास्टली देर बाई सेविंग टाइम एंड फ्यूअल समटाइम्स दीज वॉर्म ओशन करेंट्स दे मेल्ट आइसबर्ग्स so these melting of icebergs yeah. transportation of ships so these are the major effects of ocean currents hope the lesson is understood thank you